Hello and welcome to the in news series of Rishti IAS. My name is Pooja and today we are going to discuss India's first ever indigenously developed aircraft carrier. So this is very important from the perspective of your examination, specifically GS mains paper 3. And of course, from the perspective of prelims, we have to get ensured that we cover all the important facts. So I have made sure that let us move on and talk about INS Vikrant India's first ever indigenously developed aircraft carrier. Okay, so these are the many things that we are going to cover comprehensively. I will cover everything. Let us move on and talk about the news. So INS Vikrant to be born again on Friday. You must be confused. Why am I saying born again while I'm at the same time saying that it's first ever aircraft carrier because it was decommissioned and it was not developed by India. It inherited India, actually not inherited, but bought it from the British Royal Navy. And after it was decommissioned, it was reinvigorated by putting indigenous parts in it as India's first ever aircraft carrier. Okay, so don't be confused like this. Let us first of all understand why are we discussing this with these flags because India has just got rid of its colonial legacy when it comes to the naval flag. It has got its new naval nishan and we have discussed this topic in our in focus series. I will attach the link of it in the description box so that you can know more about it. So this was the erstwhile flag. Now we have our new flag unveiled, unveiled by the Prime Minister. So all this has been already discussed. So I will not go into the details of that. Let's talk about what is an aircraft carrier. So an aircraft carrier, according to Cambridge Dictionary, says that a large ship that carries military aircraft and also has a long flat surface where they take off and land. Specifically, if we see this diagram, this is the aircraft carrier. And you can see that I'm so sorry for using a black pen over here. Let me use it. Let me use the red one. So these are the aircrafts which are being carried by this vessel. That is why it is an aircraft carrier. And you can see this part is a short runway sort of thing, which is also known as key jump. Okay. We will discuss this in the upcoming slides. So what is it fundamentally? What an aircraft is fundamentally? It can be seen as an airfield at sea. That means at sea, we do not have a terrestrial area, but this particular aircraft carrier will work as a terrestrial area where we can induct our aircraft at far away seas which are not near to India. Okay, how does it work? See, it has certain special facilities because we do not have a long runway in the aircraft carrier. We have a short runway. So in order to make up for that, the path of the runway is curved. You see, this is actually curved in nature and I might show you here in the introductory picture of the INS Vikrant. Uh, yes, this as you can see it is a curved space. So this is basically a stow bar model. Once the aircraft goes to it, towards this key jump runway, it does not at all go straight because this is a curved one. It does not go straight but it jumps up and it receives a good amount of height because of the curved nature of this. So for short takeoff, it is turned into the wind so that the wind can facilitate the jumping of the aircraft. And after that, it works. This is the stow bar model. Remember that. Okay. Moving ahead, as we discuss this, then for landing, aircraft are fitted with retractable hooks. Hooks are already fitted. And when it has to land, it is, you know, it works as a retractable model. That means we can um, bring the aircraft back with the hooks, with the help of the hooks. So as I already told you, once again, look at this particular diagram. And if we talk about the origin, origin is basically, we have to discuss origin because the history is important. So the British Navy experimented on the HMS Argus during the World War I. It just experimented, never used it in, sort, in, in a full-fledged manner. Now, it was first used in combat during the early stages of World War II. Its actual, uh, its actual military capacity was demonstrated by Japanese. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor by carrier-based planes on 7th December 1941 demonstrated the potential of the aircraft carrier. So, you see, 
that by World War II, we knew that aircraft carriers are very important. USS Langley became the first US carrier to join the naval fleet in March 1922. And in the same year, in the month of December, we see Japanese aircraft Hothyo entering into service. So remember these names. If we talk about India, India has two aircraft carriers as of now. INS Vikramaditya, which is built actually, which has been built by the help of Russia, not indigenously developed, and INS Vikrant, which has been repriced because uh, of the retrofitting and the development has been given to a public sector undertaking of the Indian of the Indian government, and they redeveloped it. Okay, so it is the first ever aircraft carrier that was operated by the Indian Navy. Remember that the pennant number for this was R11. So pennant number is basically for Royal Navies belonging to European origin. Now it has shed its colonial legacy. The motto of its predecessor was the same as it has as of now. Jayama Sam Yuddhi Spradha. So it means I conquer those who fight against me. Okay. Remember this. This is a very important prelims fact. This could be asked. And this was seen that Rig Veda already had this mentioned. This has been taken from Rig Veda. The quotation. The motto of it. Vikrant actually means courageous and even in Bhagavad Gita and certain other important Hindu scriptures we see the word Vikrant which was used to describe the soldiers of the Pandavas in the sixth shloka in the Bhagavad Gita and Vikrant was seen there. So these are the very small prelims fact you can uh, you can be asked in ancient history or culture. Okay. So if we talk about the technicalities of it, 262 meters long this particular aircraft carrier is and it is 62 meters wide. The flight deck bigger than two football fields. When you uh, combine those two football fields, even bigger than that, we have our deck in INS Vikrant. The aircraft carrier displaces around 43,000 tons. Maximum design speed is of 28 knots. Endurance of 7,500 nautical miles. And it is an 18 floor high ship which can support 2,400 compartments for 1,600 strong crew. Apart from this, many other facilities have been given. If you want to know an interesting fact, there is a unit that can cook 300 chapatis in just one hour. So you can see the government has done a lot for the defense sector. So as I already told you, Vikrant uses Stobar model. That is short takeoff, but arrested recovery. As I told you about ski jump, because ski jump is for launching aircraft because of the curved space, the aircraft jumps up. Okay. And a set of three arrestor wires for the recovery of the aircraft will be on board. Approximate cost for this particular building uh, establishment of the aircraft was 20,000 crore. And you will be pleased to know that 80 to 85 percent has been plowed back into the Indian economy because of the indigenous structure of it. The components that have been used are indigenous in nature. So 76 percent indigenous content. Employment was given to 2,000. CSL personnel with another 13,000 working indirectly for the building. So employment was also generated and we have been Atmanirbhar in the preparation of this particular aircraft carrier. So the carrier will have an air wing where 30 aircrafts would be kept. And here we see Russian origin MiG 29K fighter jets, airborne early warning control helicopter Kamo 31 helicopters will also be there. US origin MH60R multi-role helicopters will be there. And our homegrown technology with respect to advanced light helicopters and light combat airway. Everything will be supported by this particular aircraft carrier. Moving ahead. Now, if we discuss the history, this particular aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant, was erstwhile known as HMS Hercules by this name. It entered into the service of the British Royal Navy in India. Okay. It was an aircraft carrier. And in 19, it was there in 1943 during the Second World War. So before they could finish off the aircraft, you know, used as an, it was being built. But uh, it couldn't be completed. So what happened? In 1946, the work on the ship was suspended. Then US and UK navies, they started selling off the ships that were used during the World War II or was not completed. So India said, I will buy this aircraft carrier from you. So in 1957, the Indian government purchased HMS Hercules and it was commissioned into the Indian Navy on 4th March 1961 in Belfast and it joined the Indian Navy through Bombay Harbour on 3rd November 1961 where the then President, uh, sorry, the then Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehruji, he, uh, you know, hosted the uh, aircraft carrier in India. Okay. 
moving ahead let us talk about the other things and the important part of it that in the liberation war of 1971 the bangladesh liberation war ins vikrant played a huge role apart from that we must know that it was decommissioned on 31st january 1997 after being in service for so long after 26 years of the liberation war it was decommissioned then what happened it was converted into a museum to glorify the past you know to uh, let people feel the manifestation of the past, past glories of this particular ship but the cost of maintaining it was a lot and it was finally scraped in november 2014 all right so this much i hope you have understood and then what happened the process of indigenization started they had their plans in the 1990s only but a proper plan was actually presented in the early 2000s okay so the design and construction of the indigenous aircraft carrier one that is INS Vikrant was sanctioned in January 2003 to Kochi Shipyard Limited CSL that I was telling you about and it works under the Ministry of Shipping and it was tasked to build the ship all right and this was the first warship construction project of the CSL remember all these facts moving ahead now the readiness of the IAC's propulsion system was tested in November 2020. What happened? Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the trials, the next set of trials were delayed. All right. And on August 4, 2021, it took, INS Vikrant took its first open sea voyage from Kochi and returning four days later. It returned four days later. And then second and third phases of sea trials in October 21 and January 2022 were taken respectively. Fourth and final phase were done in the year, uh, this year itself in the month of July. And the ship was delivered in the month of July itself to the Navy after being completing, after completing its entire sea trial. Okay, moving ahead, let us talk about the importance of the aircraft carriers. See, first of all, understand India is a peninsular country. We did talk about Chola dynasty how they were aware that in order to remain a peninsular power a power in south india they need to ensure that all the areas which can be used for attacking peninsular india should be captured by them so that is why important rulers like raja raja and rajendra chola they conquered sri lanka they conquered the malay peninsula maldives in order to remain a power right i'm not saying that india should conquer these countries but i am saying that yes in order to ensure that no country can be used against india india needs aircraft carrier so for peninsular for uh, india to be a peninsular country a strong peninsular country it has to develop a huge uh, you know a, a hugely and humongously provided for navy okay and then china's rising dominance we have already discussed in uh, specifically we talk about Sri Lanka when the Yuan Bank 5 ship has been used there docking it is docking over there in order to keep an eye it's a surveillance ship every country of course gathers intelligence if they are saying no they are they know that it's an open secret so Sri Lanka is already vulnerable for India because of the docking of the Yuan Bank ship another thing in Pacific the Solomon Islands have halted the foreign naval ships to its dock because something that China, of course, China has to do something with it because it already has a treaty with China. So China is signing these treaties. It is asking these countries for providing their docks for the ships, China's vessels. Then, of course, India has to ensure that it is prepared. And why not we prepare ourselves to match our allies such as USA, Australia, Japan, these countries have a good amount of aircraft carriers. China has already built its two aircraft carriers. It is in the process for the third one. So, of course, in order to match our naval allies, especially the Quad, we have to ensure that we can prove, we are proving ourselves that we are capable of designing and developing our own indigenous aircraft carriers. AUKUS. AUKUS is a deal between, I have already told you, still I will repeat, between Australia, UK and US. So that technology transfer can take place from US, UK to Australia in order to develop uh, naval uh, power with respect to nuclear powered submarine. So if India will lag behind in aircraft carrier, it will lag behind in other technologies as well. So these are the basic things we have to understand for India to be secure enough that we have our own aircraft carrier. Blue water Navy capacity. That means if any country has to prove itself to be a naval power the, this is basically known as blue water navy capacity every country aspires to be which is specifically a country that has a coastline 
for that india needs it another part that we have to understand by doing so by developing our own indigenous aircraft carrier india is now a part of the elite group of us russia japan france uk and china that we have designed and developed our own aircraft indigenous aircraft carrier we have saved a lot of money we do not we did not need to spend a lot of foreign exchange because as it is indigenously developed the money came back into our economy and at this point of time where economies around the world you can see are lagging behind they are actually deteriorating not even lagging behind we needed this boost okay apart from that we have to ride out the contemporary volatility there i mean there are so many countries that are in, engulfed in war such as us uh, ukraine and russia usa's intervention in taiwan has made china to come on the verge of invading taiwan that is another thing apart from that many other countries are still seeing disputes either internally or externally so india should ensure that we are capable enough to not depend on any country so that if india remains independent in its foreign policy it can become a much bigger power in the eyes of the world apart from that for manufacturing and export india has shown that we have manufactured our aircraft carrier so it gives a message to the other countries that we can manufacture your as well so investment will come apart from that india can also build and export there uh, the uh, ins um, such as aircraft carriers such as these kind of vessels to other countries smaller countries specifically southeast asian countries so these are the many important things that india has proven so way forward now there is a need for more aircrafts ca aircraft carrier why because the idea is for india to have two carriers at any given point so that if one is for has gone for retrofitting we have two operational ones we never know when war can happen so russian origin kiev class ins vikramaditya that i have already discussed and ins vikrant sorry for this vikrant we have that now another one indigenous aircraft carrier 2 is going to be developed by the name of ins vishal and this will be a proposed displacement of around 65000 ton for ins vikrant it was 43000 ton the i have already discussed that so i hope you have understood everything if not everything 90 95% of it if you have any constructive feedback you can give me in the comment segment the question for this is ins vikrant ins vishal and vikramaditya refer to which of the following vessels nuclear powered submarines stealth frigate amphibious war uh, warfare ships or aircraft carrier just bear with me a moment i need to take the names of those who have answered my last question correctly if you have done so you can cling on and if you have not you can answer this question and move on because i'm just going to take the names okay so yesterday's question was with respect to so yes last time i asked you a question for which solomon islands were the correct answer so many of you have answered it correctly eron sagar omesh koel vikash pooja mini praveen kusum faizu prabhat venkatesh ramana pradyut manish acharya harvinder uh, ashad sunidhi also uh, ankit has answered it correctly divya divya again divya jyoti and divya morya uh, sankari ishita modi govind neha shivam anuj ramarao pallavi anshika navneet tushita sinha the survivor and then malana pujari bhargavi raghav rohit vishwanathan khushboo satakshi neha simran sandeep anayas mohin khan alokdeep aarti himanshu pragadeeswaran then akash shubh and rupal also aditya thank you so much for answering my last question correctly that's it stay engaged i will come up with more segments